uh, brain is honestly kind of empty today. <laughs> probably, probably not good for uh, figuring out what the hell is going on in this visual novel, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I feel like kind of a lot happened last time I played this game, but a lot kind of happens when I play this game, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's just get into it. What's going on in Osawa's story? Uh, I think they just, like, found out that- I think they figured out that I- That I was the one who was sending the emails? Achi just learned that, uh, what's is it? My brain is so empty, so smooth. Um, I actually learned that uh, his dad is probably the one who called the hit on Hitomi. Um, I kind of want to start with Kano's story, I think. <laughs> you ended on a gunshot, so I need to know what happens after that. <laughs> the gunshot rang out from Tatano's gun. Is a wild shot, fired reflexively as the weapon flew out of his hand. Oh. Vigard leapt from behind the water storage tank, kicking him in the arm that held the gun. Hmm. Cannon, maybe? Moving almost too fast for the eye to track, the newcomer delivered an elbow strike to Tatano's jaw. Kano didn't even have the chance to fire his gun. Where he can react, Maria's kidnapper was already laid out on the ground. Without so much as looking back, the girl bolted down the stairs. Maria! He started to chase after her, but a bright glimmer in the corner of his eyes stopped him in his tracks. Yeah, it's definitely canon. Strange assailant had drawn a knife, and was pre preparing to slit the unconscious Tatino's throat. Brought his gun back to bear. Stop right there. <clears throat> Is it canon? Knife stopped a mere millimeters from Tatano's neck. Kano was sure that if he hadn't intervened, the detective's throat would have been slit already. I don't think it's canon. I don't recognize that sleeve. Knife wielder pulled back the hood that was been that had been concealing her face. You, I know you. Kano said, shocked to see that he recognized the attacker. Oh, now it's her. Was the girl who had been knocked down by the minivan explosion? Looks like you got better clothes, though. Why stop me? She asked, her tone ice cold. Aren't you just about to shoot him yourself? I don't have a reason to shoot him anymore. Not that you've helped Maria escape. Please, put the knife away. Very well. Looks like he's not waking up for a while anyway. Just drew the knife and rose to her feet. Why did you come to Maria's rescue? Because she's my friend, the girl said simply. She's been affected with a virus. We have to get her to help as soon as possible. He headed for the stairs that Maria had scampered down. Not so fast. Don't move. I forgot the voices I gave people. <laughs> the girl's sharp tone made Kano stop. What for? Thought you wanted to help- I do want to help her, which is why I'm not letting the police get her their hands on her. The girl's voice was quiet, but hard as steel. Police are afraid of the UL virus spreading, which is why they'll certainly place Mar Maria under quarantine. If that happens, there won't be any way to save her. Just, who in the world are you? Before I answer that, let's make a deal. Kano waited, not a committal. I have information relevant to this case, the girl continued. I want to make an exchange. Kano swallowed the lump in his throat. An exchange for what? Tell me where Hitomi Osawa is. Hitomi Osawa? Stanley had taken Hitomi into custody. Kano could probably get in touch and ask him where she was, but... Why do you want to know where Hitomi is? Do we have a deal or not? Like she was in no mood to argue. Still, if she knew about the Ua virus, she was probably telling the truth about having information. 
but is a violation of police policy to leak information on any investigation to a third party. <clears throat> was it wise to trust this young woman without knowing who she was? Wait his options for a moment. I think this is the smart thing to do. <laughs> I need to know who you are. He definitely needs to know that. <laughs> definitely a, uh... Not suspect, but... <sighs> She's very related to this case. Kano needs to know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> My name is Cannon. Cannon. <laughs> Thought back to the grisly scene at the Foreign Syndicate hideout. Did she do that? It's almost a freak to wonder. Sensing his unease, Cannon spoke up, her voice low and calm. Once you hear what I have to say, I think you'll be more inclined to tell me where Hitomi is. A lingering trace of adolescence in this strange girl's face. It's hard to believe someone so young could be a covert Middle Eastern operative. Yet Kano had seen how quickly she'd been able to render Tatsuno unconscious. Right, I guess I'll go first. There's someone out there trying to get their hands on the antiviral drug. My objective is to eliminate this person and put a stop to their plan. Felt neither surprise nor horror at her use of the term eliminate. After all that happened today, he realized his sensibilities had gone numb. This person you're after, you're talking about the arms dealer named Alfard, aren't you? Cannon nodded. The Ua virus had been had has been weaponized and tested several times on the battlefield to great effect. The antiviral would win would have rendered this weapon wholly in ineffective. Countries the world over are dying to get their hands on it. <clears throat> why didn't Alfard orchestrate this kidnapping? If the goal is to get the antiviral, why not just steal it from the laboratory? A lot about this kidnapping case that still didn't add up. Tunnel was sure Alfard's plan was to end those baffling details. I feel like, even though Kano is the detective here, kinda feels like he's like the least in the loop <laughs> at times. Lab security at Okoshi Pharmaceutical is practically perfect. Place is under surveillance 24 hours a day, and getting to where the antiviral is stored requires bypassing three sophisticated electronic locks. Getting the antiviral out is impossible. Unexpectedly, a sly grin appeared on Cannon's face. If you were Alfard, how would you steal it? She asked. Huh? Taken him back by the sudden question. That good and hard about how to answer. Uh, you can sneak something out. Maybe you can sneak something in. You wouldn't need to seal it. Either B or C, right? <laughs> it's definitely not D. I'll do this one. <laughs> Saw it heads up the lab, wouldn't he be able to get it out? No. Accessing the storage facility requires authentication of both Kenji Osawa and Mamoru Tanaka. It's impossible even for one of them to gain entry alone. That's right. Stanley had mentioned the same thing. <clears throat> Left security also performs a thorough body search at the building's exit. This ensures that employees can't sneak materials out on their way from home from work. Level of security was perhaps understandable. Try to think of other ways to access the drug, but none came to him. Was this actually a choice? <laughs> Probably not. Six days ago, Alfard injected Hitomi Osawa with the Ua virus. W what? Tail had taken a sudden and unexpected turn. So it wasn't only Maria who had been infected, but Hitomi as well? Six days ago at that. Oh, hold on. Hitomi himself was perfectly healthy earlier today. So that must mean... Exactly. 
Can Jio Sawa administer the antiviral to her? Unsettling thought occurred to Kano. Supposedly impossible for Osawa to access the antiviral all by himself. And able to give it to his daughter all the same, then that had to mean he needed Mamaro's help. He needed Mamaro Tanaka's help to do it, of course. Which is why Alfard bribed Tanaka ahead of time. So that's what happened. Been paid off to inject Hitomi with the virus. Getting Osawa to take action at that point would have been wouldn't have been difficult. But why go to such lengths to get the antiviral administered to Itomi? Come on. <laughs> Just gotta connect the connect the dots in your head, man. Why would Alfred have Atomi infected with the virus only to have only to then have her father cure it? To get the virus out, dumbass. Okay. It's been roughly a week since she was given the antiviral. The DDS still in her body. The what? Essentially, taking blood from Itomi Osawa now would allow someone to extract minuscule amounts of the antiviral. Kano is stunned. Suddenly all these seemingly unrelated threads are beginning to form a pattern. <clears throat> so, since getting the antiviral itself out of the lab wasn't an option, it was the thought of using a human vessel. Which means the thing that Alphard's really after is... Kano nodded. Yes. Itomi's blood. Specifically requested that Itomi make the ransom handoff. Additionally, the crime syndicate was hired to carry out the, a relay with the attached case containing the ransom money. This would disrupt the investigation and distract the police, allowing the kidnappers to target Itomi in secret. Now, hold on. Something about this story that made no sense to Kano. Tell me this. Uh, I don't think this is actually a choice. Why not kidnap Hitomi in the first place? That was a key question right there. Why kidnap Marie instead? <clears throat> One Hitomi's blood, abducting her, not her sister, was the obvious move. The kidnappers mistaken Maria for Hitomi. Two were twins after all, so it wasn't inconceivable, but it's my fault that Maria was kidnapped. Cannon looked away. Well, except not really. <laughs> I contact <laughs> I contacted her before all this started. I told her about the kidnapping plan and gave her a GPS beacon to give to her sister so I could track Katomi's location after she was abducted. Maria needs to turn her uh Needs to turn it back on, though. <clears throat> but my plan backfired. Maria switched places with Itomi and let herself get taken by Alfard. What the hell? I had Maria taken this to the police. Or she was so determined to protect her sister, why not get her to leave town or something like that? In some sort of accident, though. The GPS never turned on after the kidnapping and I wasn't able to track Maria down. Something that even Alphard hadn't even counted on. <clears throat> Cannon class Cannon cast a gla Cannon cast a glance over at Tatano. Ew. This person right here. So Tatano had disrupted Alphard's plan by going after Hitomi himself. Considering where it all led. Alphard must be panicking about now. Can't let down our guard. Even now. I'm sure the mastermind is thinking of some way to fit what this man has done into their master plan. <clears throat> so, it's a perfectly imperfect plan, is that what you're saying? Precisely. Flash kind of an approving grin. Heard that from Stanley, the man who drove you to the hospital earlier. A case officer, huh? Case officer? That was it. Stanley was CIA. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the U.S. Embassy in, in Akasaka functions as the headquarters for the CIA Japan. The, the CIA Japan branch, as the embassy building is not 
reliably secure, however, the agency carries out many of its activities in specially constructed embassy annex facilities. <clears throat> Often under the guise of cultural exchange organizations. Poorly over 100 CIA personnel active in Japan, but given the inherent secrecy involved, the exact number is not officially known. Okay. Now that Kano thought about it, it all made sense. Since Alfred is an arms dealer with worldwide connections, I don't I don't know what nation might be trying to obtain the antiviral. Obviously, any country that has the viral weapon would want to prevent their enemies from obtaining it. It's no huge surprise that people are butting in to put a stop to Alfred's plan. Ah. Tiny beeping sound caught Kano's attention. Mm -mm. Pull the PDA from her breast pocket. Per personal digital assistant. Uh, refers to various types of small portable devices for information management. Usually also referred to as a handheld PC. Oh? Oh, nice. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> GPS I gave to Maria had just been powered on. To find her location. Where is she? She's on the move. But why is the GPS suddenly active now? Cannon frowned. Anyway, I told you what I know. Now tell me where he told me is. Alright. Got out his phone and called Stanley. It's quick to pick up. What's going on? Um <laughs> Where's the Tomi? On our way to Endo Electronics in Dogen Saga. Endo Electronics, why are you going there? It's familiar with the dilapidated old storefront. Passed by the place countless times. Too long of a story, there's a lot that happened. How are things on your end? About as bad as they could be, but I'm getting closer to the truth. Make sure you keep it me safe. Alfred is after her blood. Her blood? Told Stanley what he'd heard from Cannon. I see. That's what going. That's what's going on. Once we're finished with things in Dogen Saga, I'll bring Hitomi ba right back to the precinct. <clears throat> Where is she? Cannon asked as soon as Kano hadn't hung up. She's on her way to an electronics store store in Dogen Saga. I see. <clears throat> Check Maria's lo location on her PDA. She heading to also t heading towards Dogen Saga. First, I need to get Maria. I'll get to a tell me after that. I'm going with you. Be my guest. Thanks. <laughs> you're, you're cooler with that than I thought you would be. <laughs> with that, Cannon was off and running. <clears throat> Took one last glance at the un unconscious Tatanel and then hurried after Cannon as fast as he could. Not gonna get help for Tatano. They ran from South Hill and Nanpeidai towards Shibuya Station. Started and weaved madly through the narrow side streets, Cannon took an occasional glimpse at her PDA. Must be taking the shortest possible route to Maria's location. He stayed quiet, keeping pace as Cannon led the way. Or he knew it, they were heading up Dogen Saga. Not too long, they'd be at Endo Electronics. Hey! What? Are you sure this is the right area? Are you doubting the D GPS? <clears throat> Can I see it? <laughs> let me see, let me see, let me see. Peered over Cannon's shoulder and saw that the GPS was inde indeed pointing in the direction they were headed. They weren't running around at random, nor was the unit broken. And the electronics is right up ahead. What? Stopped abruptly. What are you suggest suggesting? Twins are headed for the same location. That's my guess. What did that actually mean? I hadn't figured that out yet. Took off running again and before long, Endo Electronics came into view. Stopped in front of the shop door. Mm -mm. Right here. I knew it. Endo Electronics, the same place Atome was headed. 
So we're all lining up together. <laughs> the threads are crossing, okay. As they're crossing. Those we've been brought together. <clears throat> she peered keenly at the building and its surroundings. Kyle swallowed hard. We. We, we. You've been roped into this too. Quite possibly. Flashed a winning smile then and started to head into the shop. Why would Maria go into Endo Electronics though? Hold on, I need to report into HQ. Call Kuze on a cell. I feel like we're barreling towards a bad end. What's going on? Look at Maria Osawa. Was that? Come on, the time is critical. I lead back at her. Where's the location? Where are you? I can't say right now, sir. Please just leave this to me. Hold on. I just distinctly feel this is about to be a bad end. We're gonna w walk into the store and Hitomi and Maria are fucking dead. <laughs> Kinda ignored the director squawking and then hung up. Kinda had already entered the shop. Only unconcerned by the idea that she might be playing right into Alphard's hands. Despite her youth, she clearly thought of herself qu as quite capable. Followed after her. Navigating a veritable cavern of junk, they came to a door that led to the living area beyond. Opened the door and immediately stepped inside. Divided into a dwelling area and a workroom. Uh, uh, uh. Man's voice could be overheard from the workroom raised in anger. Don't you want to save Suzune? Crept closer. Peering through the doorway, they saw a tense confrontation in progress. Maria and Stanley were standing there, looking down at a middle-aged man who had a restraint and told me with a stun gun pressed to her throat. She can survive a stun gun, though. No. Dad, of course I want to help Susan A. A young man stepped into view, speaking to the older fellow. But you think this is what this is what she wants you to do? Watch intently, tensing for action. So much at risk here. It's about to barge into the workroom when Cannon grabbed him by the shoulder. Let's wait and see how this goes first. Realized this was good advice. If they provoked the older man, things could very well turn take a sharp turn for worse. Just had to hope that the young man could talk him down. <laughs> Can't jump to you yet, okay. Let's get Achi's story up there then. Achi told Stanley and Otomi what his father had done. <laughs> Awkward car ride, okay. As she listened, Hitomi hung her head. Her voice was sallow. I'm so sorry. I'm not really sure what to say. Clenched his fist so hard his knuckles popped, struggling to keep his emotions in check. So if I were right- <clears throat> Sorry. So, if I were rendered brain dead, you could help your sister. A state where brain function has ceased irreversibly in Japan. Two conditions for declaring. Uh, that's probably not. Uh, that's probably a typo. For declaring brain death. The first is that the patient must be comatose and in a state of apnea, no longer breathing, due to damage to the brain. The root cause is diagnosed and is deemed that no reasonable treatment will restore bare brain function. Stop. Please don't say things like that. Sad look came to Atomi's face and she pressed her right hand to her heart. I mean, to find out like this. She turned to Achi, tears glistening in her eyes. I want to help your sister, but... <clears throat> we have other things to worry about right now. This time it was Stanley who cut her off. Remember. Alfred is after you, he told me. Isn't that what Cannon told you? Y yes. She said I was I was the mastermind's target. Wiped her tears away with her fingertips. So Alfred and Achi's father are after the same thing. Is that just a coincidence? 
Didn't sound like he thought so. Hold up. Yeah, my dad's way out of line, but he did what he did for Susan A. He wouldn't work with terrorists. I'm not saying he's deliberately aiding terrorists. It's common sense that a pro wouldn't get an amateur involved with their plans. It makes it too likely that a clumsy misstep will cause things to fall apart. But then again, that's not the way Alfred thinks. So actually, the likelihood of failure could well be a part of the plan. Thought back to what Cannon had said earlier. Man. If you achieve your goals using accidental means, the outline becomes blurred. It makes it harder for anyone outside looking in to grasp what the actual plan is. <laughs> the lighting in this in this Suji makes her face look weird. <laughs> Not only have they put together a perfect plan, they purposely left certain tiny holes in it. Uh -oh. We assume the plan has failed. This slip-up might be exactly what Alfard wants. Uh -oh. Sort of an intentional hole, then. Stanley snorted. And I told you guys that too, huh? If that's the case, you really are a fool. What did you just call me? You know all along how formidable this opponent is. You sh should have given Hitomi to over to police custody right away. It's only a matter of dumb luck that e either of you are still alive right now. Look or not, me and Hitomi have managed to get by safely. That's all that matters. What is exactly the relationship between you two anyway? Are you guys dating? Exchange glances. We could be. <laughs> When Hitomi hesitated uneasily, Achi decided he'd better speak up. It's not like that. We just happened to run in into each other earlier today. Guess I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon someone in trouble. Can't abandon someone in trouble, huh? Sure you're not trying to make yourself feel self-important? Plenty of people out there who... There are plenty of people out there that you can't see who are also in trouble, but who are also suffering. You only help the ones close at hand, and what's the point, really? Well, it's a lot bigger than you can imagine, and there's a lot you're blind to. So what? If I see someone who's in trouble, I'm supposed to just, just ignore them. No, I can't do that. <laughs> I see someone collapse from hunger, I'm not gonna walk on by because there's people starving somewhere else in the world. I'll be like, hey, let me treat you to a beef ball or whatever. <laughs> Gonna have come up with a smarter example. I love Achi so much. He's a little bit dumb, but he's a good person. Okay, I'm an idiot. My bad. Staley laughed again. Today's been an interesting day. Is it another fellow? <clears throat> As was another fellow earlier, it was just like you. Meaning what? Was he an idiot too? Yeah, he was an idiot. <laughs> Do all you Japanese have that problem? Hardly. My little sister's so smart she'd make, your, she'd make your eyes pop out. I'm sure relieved to hear that. <laughs> if ever- <laughs> Man, if everyone in this country was as dumb as you guys, I might actually start to like this place. <laughs> Man, we're bonding. What does that even mean? Talk so I can understand, man. Didn't respond. Said he stuck his head out the car window, peering at the road ahead. <clears throat> this should be a station now, and the traffic has ground to a halt. Gridlock again? It's probably better to walk the, west the rest of the way to Endo Electronics. Pull over to the side of the road. Shoulder that runs along either side of the tra traveled portion of the roadway. Place where trash toss out the windows of moving cars tend to accumulate. Tossing cigarette butts and empty cans out onto the street can potentially hurt people and definitely makes a mess. Please don't let her. <laughs> Message from Min Clean. Achi got out of the car, feeling his guts not up with worry. Pretty soon he was gonna have to confront his father. Stanley gave Achi a look. Scared about meeting with your father. I'm scared. 
First things first, I'm gonna punch him right in the face. Then we can have ourselves a chat. Don't let your emotions get out of control. Your father might be one of the key players in this case. I don't give a damn about that. So you told me by the hand sort of walking. Up and down Dogen Zaga so many times today already. This is probably the last time he and Hitomi would make their way up the hill together. Ooh, is this actually a choice? Wait, what time is it? What time is it in game? Um, seven ten. Or not seven ten, five ten, seventeen ten. Twenty five minutes. Walked at an easy pace, wanting to delay the end of their time to get her just a little longer. Once they reached his home, this kidnapping case would be all over, because of his own father. Daisuke would be arrested as the culprit. Uh -uh. Kidnapping for ransom carries a potential life sentence, a definite term of imprisonment of no less than three years. Bringing Daisuke down would be easy. Wasn't worried about that part at all. If he didn't hold back, there was a good chance he'd wind up hurting his father. Holding back. Getting hurt. Baby Achi? A memory from long ago rose in Achi's mind. Pure white, Pure white karate gi. Thrusting out with his left fist. Daisuke collapsing to the floor. One of the memories of his father that Achi could not forget. Kneeling before the memorial art altar of his mother Katone, Achi wept uncontrollably. Clutches Ohajiki tightly in his hands. Toy made of small, coin-shaped glass beads, somewhat similar to marbles. Flicking one's pieces into the opponents with a fingertip. Specific rules vary greatly by region. Always been rather clingy with his mother. When she was alive, she'd often joined him for ohajiki, origami, and the like. On this particular day, Achi had to come home miserable after getting bullied by the neighborhood kids for acting like a wimp. Achi. Turn up to see his father holding two cups of shaved ice. Come here for a bit. Did you teach him how to- how to be ass? <laughs> they sat on the stairs together eating their sweet frozen confections. You wanna get tougher. Desuke's words were soft and simple. Don't you and me get tougher together? Looked up to his father, frowning in confusion. How are we gonna do that? Well, for starters, how about we learn some karate? Karate? Twisted up unhappily at the idea. He couldn't even imagine himself punching or kicking anyone. It'll be alright. I'll go with you. Don't you worry. <clears throat> Flex one of his scrawny arms. Muscles bulge up the tiniest bit. It's well rare his father wasn't much of an athlete. An athletics meet at his grade school. Even now, the memory of Daisuke tripping clumsily during the parent participation relay burned into Achi's mind. Children's event where the parents who have come to watch their children compete and are asked to join in with them took part in the tug of war only to get laughed up, la only to get tangled up in the rope and dragged over the line. <laughs> Was understandably disheartened by his father's embarrassing display, aiming the lunch his father had made for him is Spirits quickly returned. Taisuke had made rice balls that were clumsily oversalted, but Achi could tell how much hard how hard he worked to prepare them. I guess. I mean, if you're gonna be there, two of them began training together at a local karate jojo. On his white gi and fastened his obi tightly. As he did so, he felt like he felt as if his feelings were being anchored in place as well. Achi's gi sleeves made a whooshing sound as he thrust out his fist in time with the sensei's chant. 
Even simple kata practice made him feel like he was getting stronger somehow. His dad, having left Suzanne to care of their neighbors, was working up a sweat alongside him. Out of shape and his technique was shaky, he was soon exhausted and he went to lean up against the, the dojo wall. <laughs> Stepped out, in, out of the training circle and called out to his father. Dad, are you okay? I yeah. I'm just gonna take a little break. Sounded like he was on the edge of hyperventilating. <clears throat> Thanks, Dad. What for? For asking me to come take karate lessons with you. Sure you'd never dare to go to the dojo alone. As long as you're liking it. Go on, get back to training. Deep brow, what a deep bow. Achi resumed his kata practice. After walking home from the dojo, Achi turned to his father. How come you want to get stronger, Dad? I mean, you're not getting bullied by your friends. It was quiet for a few moments before answering. His words came out awkward and embarrassed. It's picked on a lot when I was your age, too, Achi. But a friend who always come and bailing me out. Friend. Friend. Doesn't look into his father's eyes. He's a real fighter. I always looked up to him. I wanted to be strong like him. His expression turned lonely. I don't get to see him anymore, though. <clears throat> Why not? Did he die? N no, no, nothing like that. Didn't, did you guys have a fight? Something like that. <laughs> Smiled sadly. Stared out into the sky for a while before speaking up again. His name's Tatano. Uh huh? My friend. That's his name. Achi's father increased his pace. Come on. You have to go and pick up Suzune. After that, despite Achi's questions, Daisuke would say no more about his old friend. By the time he was almost done with grade school, Achi had grown up fit and strong, almost unrecognizable from his younger self. Maybe he had the physical knack in him all along. Chosen as the representative for the boys' karate team, even managing to take second place in a national tur tournament. Nobody bullied Achi anymore. One time, Daisuke suggested the two of them do some sparring. He had been a national competitor, but... Sure, but he was still a grade schooler squaring off against an adult. His father had been close to- has been training for close to two years now as well and his confidence had grown accordingly. He decided to face off against his old man. <clears throat> Early on in their karate t training, Achi's Kumide had seemed rather hopeless. He'd been shocked that his out-of-shape father was able to overpower him, but also pleased to get a sense of how strong the man was. This time, Achi thought he might he might bleh, he might well lose again, but he was going to go all out. As they adopted their fighting stances, Daisuke's face was full of confidence. He gave the signal to begin, and Achi opened with a sharp low kick. Didn't guard against it. The blow caught him in the thigh. It looked like Achi. Looked to Achi, he allowed himself to take a hit, not fearing the effect of a, of a child's kick. Man. <laughs> Kids can still hit pretty hard. A lot, a lot of my um, younger relatives, who are like grade school, middle school now, they do like Brazil Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, Muay Thai, stuff like that. The one who does boxing, they could all squarely beat my ass. <laughs> Proceeded to unleash several more low kicks to the same spot. <clears throat> bit by bit, Daisuke's face revealed his discomfort. Finally, he l yanked his leg away. <sighs> I don't remember. When Minori Kawa went to, I feel like when Minori Kawa went to talk to Daisuke before, was he walking with a limp? Maybe I don't remember. I feel like that was correct though. 
<clears throat> That's when Achi realized his father wasn't letting himself get hit on purpose, unable to keep up with the speed of his son's fo footwork. That was the case, Achi felt bad about exploiting his dad's weakness. He decided to leave his leg alone. Aim the punch at his father's midsection. He was shocked by the impact as the blow struck home. He's too strong. <laughs> He's too strong. <laughs> Hadn't attacked with a great deal of force. Sort of light midsection pun punch as a check. Pulled back his fist, Daisuke crumbled to the floor, writhing in pain as he clutched his gut. Oh no. Stared in disbelief at his own hand. You're too strong. That was the last day Daisuke went to the dojo. <clears throat> That's pathetic. Such a loser. On his way home from practice, and some older students from the dojo had started ribbing on him. What did you just say? Kids were middle schoolers, but Achi wasn't about to back down. Thrust out a, with a quick punch, stopping it just short of one boy's nose. Go on, say that again. I'll kick your ass. When Paleman took off and ran, small did small victory did nothing to bolster Achi's spirits. His father looked so small and lonely, heading away after quitting, quitting karate. Ashi didn't think there was anything pathetic about that. Sure, maybe by now he was better at karate than his father. But really, what difference did that make? <clears throat> Growing stronger, he learned something. Using force to win out over someone else didn't mean anything. Strength alone didn't determine a person's worth. Loved and respected his father for going to the dojo with him. Meeting him in a, karate, in a karate match didn't change the way he felt. I feel like we've seen this exact picture of... <laughs> of Stanley talking on the phone before. <laughs> he just like, cut it out and repasted it in a different CG or something. <laughs> surface from his memories to hear Stanley talking on his phone. I see, so that's what's going on. Once we're finished with things in Dogen's Saga, I'll bring Hitomi back to the precinct. Turn to the American. What was that about just now? <clears throat> Stanley's reply was clipped. I know what they're after now. Proceeded to wrap up his phone call. Guess I'm not gonna get much out of this guy. <clears throat> you can see Endo Electronics up ahead. Hurry inside when Stanley stopped him. Go in first, you two wait out here. No way, this is my dad we're talking about. And don't you think it's dangerous to bring Hitomi right up to him? Alright. We'll wait here for a bit and then once we know it's safe, we'll head on in. Cool with that? I'm cool with that. <laughs> Stepped inside. Fussed about impatiently staring at the entrance entryway, palm of his clenched fist was sweating. Never before in his life had he wanted to just deck his old man. <laughs> Watched him uneasily. He told me. Y yes? I'm sorry. I really don't want you to have to see this, but... I think you're about to witness the crowning shame in Endo family history. Don't say that. Squeeze his hand. And his other fist unclenching. Please, you just have to try and talk to your father. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh oh. A lot of crash from inside the building. Time for waiting has passed. Let's go. Raced inside, barging into the living quarters without bothering to shed his shoes, he heard his father's voice coming from the workroom. Man. Dad. I hurried through the workroom door and saw Stanley holding his father pinned across a desk. Let me go, let me go. 
Trash both of his legs. Stanley, please let my father go. I want to talk to him. Or dismissively, but he did as he was asked. Stood up, rubbing at a sore wrist. Dad, please, you have to tell me. Where's Maria? Maria, wh what are you talking about? Daisuke wouldn't meet his eyes. Don't play dumb with me. You know who this is, don't you? Hitomi Osawa. Girl you've been after. Maria's her sister. Remain silent. Kinda of pretend you didn't call the hospital. Something about maybe being able to get your hands on a heart. Seriously, it's all so simple. Even I can tell what's been going on. You've been watching me and Hitomi through the surveillance cameras. You were telling the guy with the cane where we were. Blood began to drain from his father's face. Don't you go quiet on me. If I'm wrong, then go ahead. Tell me the truth. Ah, oh, shit. Shout out suddenly, knocking an external hard drive from his desk onto the floor. Over and done before Stanley could stop him. Picked up the shattered drive. Guessing there was important data on here. But it's from the cameras. No idea what you're talking about. Can't do this to an innocent person, Dad. Sound of footsteps from out in the shop. Someone was quickly getting closer. Grabbed Tony by the hand and pulled her against the wall. Uh oh. Stiffened as he turned his gaze to the door. Is it Maria, probably? Yeah. Oh, it's not. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> I doubt it's gonna be an Osawa story. It's probably gonna be a Minori Kawa story. Lies. TV News continued to report on how Min Mamoru Tanaka had been killed in the minivan explosion. What? Does this mean? Chucky blinked in confusion. I mean, Hana told us herself that the van explosion was her father committing suicide, didn't she? The only explanation I can think of is that Hana was lying. <laughs> Scratched his head as, as he considered the situation. But why? I was a little to snort. Seemed that Mr. Toyama had her lie in order to deceive us. What a standing individual using his own daughter to buy himself some time. I to yell at the guy, but he managed to hold his tongue. Important thing was that was yeah, was that Toyama was still alive. Still alive, he could there was there was still a way to save him in publishing. They get the current issue out on time with a big scoop winning in the wings for the issue after that. From there on out it should be smooth sailing. No matter <clears throat> Seeing as Mr. Toyama isn't dead after all, we'll just wait here for him. Sat down back on the sofa. Lean threateningly toward Chiaki. Hey, you sure you don't know where the guy's hanging, hiding out? I don't. If I did, I'd never tell you. Say what now? Leaned even closer as she, she stood on her tiptoes in defiance and her foreheads collided with a dull thud. Both thrilled back, cl clutching their heads in their hands. <laughs> Just calm down, Chiaki. For now, I'm gonna look for clues to where Toyama might have gone. You just focus on working your, on your article. Oh? Getting all cooperative all of a sudden, I see. I wanna change up the plan for the next month's issue. And I can't do that without the editor-in-chief's approval. <clears throat> what Minori Cobb was actually looking for, however, was a back issue of four-star general gossip. Pretty sure the article on Osawa had been printed in the mag magazine's inaugurable, inaugurable issue. He could find that scandalous piece that the scientists had asked for. He'd be also be he'd also be able to get his big league about the power balance of the world being at stake. And if he could get that, not only would next month's issues be not only would next month's issue be a sure thing, it was 
a good bet that sales figures would go through the roof. Found a file folder full of early material and quickly flipped through it. Didn't take him long to find the article. Honoring Okoshi Pharmaceutical arranges marriage of political convenience. Probably jumped off the page. Read over the story. Piece of gist of it was this. Corporate director of Okoshi Pharmaceutical had sacrificed his daughter in order to keep a researcher named Kenji Osawa on board. Daughter, however, had been previously dating another man. That must have been what Osawa wanted him to look into, the guy his wife has been, had been dating before they were married. Should be easy enough to ask whoever had written the article. Jump to the end of the page looking for a writing credit. What if it's Chiaki? Oh, Toyama himself. Okay. <laughs> Ain't you done yet? Tell us where Toyama is already. Yeah, we're gonna need to do something about these guys. Still looking into it. Just hold on. They show of opening and closing various desk drawers. Drawers themselves were packed with a jumbled mess of electrical and gas bills, no house delivery menus, and the like. They look faster. Butter egg this guy up with some noodles. <laughs> I don't know. It's coming out of your pocket though, man. Guess <laughs> hungry. Sticking over ordering some soba. Ain't no time for that. I just had some soba anyhow. God, it was awful. Don't talk to me about some noodles. Let's do a shadow boxing session as we're trying to punch out the provider of his disappointing soba. Zero kept capacity for sitting still. Back issue of the gossip he was looking for. <clears throat> still needed Chiaki's article though and she wasn't quite finished yet. Buy more time. By the way, are you familiar with SOS? SOS? Planning on interviewing them later today. Heard they're some pretty tough guys. Mm. Only one of them would be able to give me a fight would probably be the Achi Endo. Except, as I hear it, he left the gang. Really now? Haven't heard anything else interesting? Being run by some guy named Susumu. Named Susumu ran a bell. There's two punks have been arguing after the van explosion and mentioned him. <clears throat> Seems like SOS has been in a pretty rough state since, uh, since Ashi left, though. Didn't miss a beat. What do you mean, rough state? Back in the day, we're, they were all goody two-shoes. Never shaked out folks down or steel or any of that stuff. I guess their founder actually hated that sort of thing. Now that he's out, a lot of rough and tumble, hot blooded types have been signing up with them. Smart move is to not get involved with the SOS nowadays, really. Hard to find a scarier bunch around here when there's a lot of them together. Hmm. Main hangout, that's sad inferno, yeah. Of an Uraha Juku. Hmm. Known as Urahara for short, area east of Japan rail, Harajuku Station, around where Takeshita Dori meets Meiji Dori. Many small clothing and accessory stores here are set up around set up in renovated businesses oh, wait. Set up in renovated houses. Most of these shops are on cu the cutting edge of youth fashion, offering quirky and unique means of personal expression. Man, you've been listening out on the streets. What gives? Urahara Juku none, huh? Smiled to himself, Fernal's location has practically fallen to his lap. Sagawa's eyes went wide. Ha! Huh. So that's where Toyama is. Wait, nah. No way a coward like him would go to a place like that. It's up for a keyboard. Can you please shut up? No, you shut up. Banana phone. Uh, that's my phone. Pulled his cell out of his pocket. Eee. It's Toyama's name on the incoming call screen. Skip the beat. Toyama, where are you? Chaki Ozu and Sagawa turned to look at him as one. Um, are you thinking, faking your death like that? Even if we could fill those pages and postpone repayment, all it would do is delay the inedible. I'd still be up in my ears in debt. Thought I'd make it look like I was dead. An exasperated sigh. Everyone knows you're still alive, so your little attempt up subterfuge didn't wind up buying you time. What? Alright, listen up. This is the threat you worry about. You'll be able to pay that back real soon. What do you mean? Landed a huge scoop. You do a print of a million copies and still sell out if we run it as an article. You really mean it? Give you all the details, just get your butt back here. But 
Those loan sharks, they're at the office right now. Fine, now I'll come to you. Tell me where you are. Crowded kind of near, predatory gleam in their eyes. <laughs> I did gotta say, the expressions. Especially on like these two Yakuza guys. <laughs> kind of an army. Norikawa had a flash of inspiration. Got it, he said quickly before Toyama could respond. Miyashi to park. I'm on my way now. Don't go anywhere. Granite one another, then bolted out the door. Nice. Heh. <laughs> this guy took the bait. I sent him to Miyashi to park. Let himself a cocksure grin. Right then. So where are you really, Toyama? You imbecile, I am at Miyashi to park. Got the urge to pull his hair out. <laughs> what the hell are you doing someplace like that? What the hell did you tell him me and she had a park? I thought that would be, be a clever ruse. Wasn't. So no time to be fighting. You're right. Tiyama, those guys are headed your way. We need you to get out of there in some place where you can talk. I'll meet you there. Okay. Somewhere safe in public where they could speak freely. Some place where the staff wouldn't be overly noisy. Nosy. Familiar cafe by the station was a natural choice. Noodle house from the menu. He's seen earlier. He opted for the. Uh, I don't know. The cafe is probably the right choice, but I feel so sorry for that waitress. That poor waitress. Calling the noodle house from the menu he'd seen earlier, he op opted for that. Sure. Dogen hunt, huh? Rumbled the words under his breath. What's the matter? Is there some problem with that? No, no. Alright, I'll meet you there. It's over in Dogen Saga. Dress is on the menu. Hung up and Minori Ka quickly gathered his belongings. Has a copy coming along. Almost done? Just a little more, I think. Bring your computer and come with me. I'll read over what you've got so far. Wait as Shiaki got ready to head over to the cafe. Headed over to the office, however. Someone else opened the door. Got 14 minutes and 57 seconds left to send your to send to press. Oof. Writer submits to the editor. The editor submits to the designer. This is stuff a whole hand up process. Being late to this causes quite a lot of trouble. 56, 55. The fuck is this guy? Slender man with a gaudy necktie entered the room and sat down on, on the nearest desk, stared fixedly at the pocket watch. Narrowed his eyes dubiously. Who the hell are you? Let's well, make sure to show up 15 minutes ahead of the appointed time. That's just common decency. Gave no indication even. He even heard Minori Kawa's question. Suppose I can wait here. Just for another 40 minutes and 20 seconds. Mr. Mino, is this guy talking about our submission? <clears throat> Stared doubtly at the newcomer. You? Are you from the printer? The man did not reply. Don't ignore me. Are you from the printer? The man remained silent. Look, cut the crap. Reached into his suit pocket and pulled out his business card. So my name's not Hey You. It read Joni Pun Printing Company LTD. Sales Department Division 1, Kochiro Katayama. Kochiro Katayama, newly assigned to Hebun Publishing. Pleasure to meet you. My predecessor is in the hospital due to a car accident. Tachio Isui, 39 years old, single. Longtime veteran at Choni Pond Printing, rather timid by nature, but the strain of dealing with publishers makes him sick to the stomach. At 1.10 early today, while we're driving to meet with one of his clients, he had to swear to avoid a young- Oh. <laughs> Oops. He had to swear to avoid a young man and woman darted into the street. He crashed into the car next to him and ended up in the hospital. Oops. <clears throat> he shouldn't make a complete recovery in about two months. What are you doing here, Katayama? I thought we had until 8 o'clock to complete proofreading. 8 o'clock? Surely you must be joking. Our company's proof proofing deadline is 5.30. Stared fixedly back at Minorikawa. 
That had to be a joke. I heard from the editor-in-chief that it was 8 o'clock. It had to mean, then, that you don't have any copy for us. It's not like we don't have it. It's not finished yet. Just hold on till 8. No, no, no. Publisher and printer need to be wor need to work in concert. Me and my predecessor was the sort to delay the proofing deadline owing, owing to your circumstances here, but now I'm in charge, and I don't make exceptions. Proofing deadline is 5.30 sharp, and I intend to keep it that way. While we've been having this discussion, you're down to 12 minutes and 32 seconds. I run his pocket watches to emphasize the point. That's ridiculous. Just who the hell do you think you are? You guys are going to print, be printing a paper that I wrote. Do you even know how lucky that makes you? So just wait, okay? Just give us... Just give us until we're done. Until you're done? When might that be, I wonder? It's until we're done. We're done, we're done. Thought for a moment and then nodded. Very well. I shall wait until you're done. Really. Give it a slight nod. You got 10 minutes and 46 seconds left. Hey! As soon as I leave here, that's when you'll be done, you'll see. Face of face was a mask of cool nonchalance. You son of a bitch, don't get all high and mighty just because you work for a printer. Hey, mighty. I say it's the people on the publishing side of things that act high and mighty. Whatever high-minded claims you might have, without us, you'll have nothing- you'd have nothing to put on the shore store shelves. Forgetting that and blithely ignoring your proofing deadline makes for more work on our end. Just what are you getting at, I wonder? It's 10 minutes and 20 seconds. You know, I kind of ground his teeth so hard he could hear it. The usual tactics were useless here. Katayama was simply too unflappable to be browbeaten. Back down now was game over. 10 minutes and 7 seconds remaining. Realize there's little point, but I'll wait until the designated time. That's just common decency. Katayama's pet phrase. As far he had said, that's just common decency three times in this story. Always make sure to show up 15 minutes ahead of the appointed time. I realize there's little point, but I'll wait until the designated time. There's one more. Do you know when and where it was? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you've shown up uh, before, before this part of the story. I don't know. Katayama's eyes were once again looked on, once again locked on his pocket watch. It's no use. Can find a way to talk this guy around. Um, Jackie held her hand up. May I say something? Oh, she's so cute. He is so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> Isn't it also common decency not to break a promise once it's been made? If you're referring to the 8 o'clock deadline, I was not the one who promised that. Maybe not, but I do believe your predecessor's responsibilities become your responsibilities. Crossed his arms and gave her a bemused look. What's your name, miss? Jackie? Jackie Iso? Expression brightened visibly. Good. That timid hesitation of yours is just splendid. I have none of the arrogance so typical among publishers. Huh? Chucky was taken rather aback. In deference to your polite demeanor, I shall wait until 7. That is the latest I can possibly allow. Alright. You know, Rikawa is practically in Katayama's face. We agreed to those terms. No, I I wasn't talking to you. But we got turned off of your owns. Katayama's railed ever so slightly. I'm not certain you're in any position to set terms here. Shut up and listen. Or on out, you're coming with us. <laughs> I'm recruiting you into my party. <laughs> Why? I'm going to finish up our copy on site, then burn the data into CD and hand it over to you there. That's why. Out of sigh resignation. Oh, very well. I was like to simply be waiting here anyway. Pump his fist in victory. Alright, Chiaki, go and copy the DTB, the DTB data we got so far into your computer. Sure thing, Mr. Mino. Is that about copying the data from the editing department's desktop? Okay, done. Let's go. Marikawa headed for the noodle house where Toyama would be waiting.
So our restaurant Dogen Hut was roughly halfway up Dogen Saga. Long-standing noodle shop on Dogen Saga. Two years ago, the owner passed away from illness. The restaurant is run by his widow, Maki Yonera, and her two part-timers, Masa from Midoriyama Academy and Mohinder. Mohinder. An Indian exchange student. Despite the sign building the establishment as a soba restaurant, Doug Meat Soba and Chilled Curry Soba are the only two actual soba offerings. First of the menu for some reason is all oud on dishes. In fact, both kind of soba both kinds of soba are terrible. So maybe the chilled curry soba would be okay if someone else was making it. Yeah, that's a lot of udon on that sign. Or is the actual soba? I don't see- I don't actually see soba on the menu here. Inside they encountered the proprietor stared at the door. She had a massive cleaver for cutting soba noodles, cut in one hand. Toyama wasn't there. Excuse me. As a middle-aged man cut by to your soft shop, her name's Toyama. Why is it like this? <laughs> why is it- uh, I don't like this. Why is it like this? Why- 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 why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Proprietus let out a weary sigh. That guy, huh? Folks know him. And that's right. Then, I'm sorry. I didn't want him to- I didn't want to have to do this. It's all his fault, though. We put you so. Didn't know what she was going on about, but suddenly had a very bad feeling. This was a bad end. <laughs> so, uh, Toyama was here. Yes, he came by. Where is he now? Please, tell me. No, I have no obligation to tell you anything- to, uh, to tell anything to friends of Toyama's. Some bad blood between Toyama and this woman. The real victim here is me. Voice rose up- rose abruptly to a roar. Now listen up good to this old woman's story. Don't have time for this. You need to find Toyama as soon as possible, but instead it looked like he'd be stuck hearing out this angry woman first. For listening, tell us your story. It's a long one. She twisted up and licked her lips, leaning in to tell her tale. Long, long ago, when I was still in my twenties, I would often make deliveries to have in publishing. Some of my best customers. So busy, my employees practically worked themselves to death. See, Doganut had the finest soap in Japan, and our spokesmodel was considered one of the most beautiful girls in the world. <clears throat> Back when this woman was in her 20s, Heaven's publishing hadn't even existed yet. But Minarikawa figured he'd better not correct her. That'd probably piss her off and make her stop entirely. Kept his mouth shut and listened to her silly tale. But anyway, that's all in the past now. As time was on, we went at, had a lot of delivery customers asking to put their bills on their tab. So much that it became a problem, and we changed our policy to, to disallow that sort of thing. But the fine folks of Heaven Publishing considered themselves an exception to that rule. But my part-timer Masa, who does the delivery the, who does the deliveries in a bit of a bind okay oh um, is a student at midoriyama academy first year student at midoriyama getting indigestion from eating too much parfait at a fast food restaurant on center guy he was there with his girlfriend to do a dry run for a competitive eating contest he wound up going to the restroom 14 times in one hour <laughs> Unable to stand idly by, his girlfriend called an acquaintance of hers, the gluttonous Chiriko Osugi, for advice on proving Masa's intestinal, intestinal fortitude. <clears throat> Turned out, however, Chiriko was planning to compete in the same contest. Knowing they were up against some monumental competition, the two continued their training, wary of the battle to come. <laughs> Took the day off to go on a date with his girlfriend. I heard her planning to compete in some ice cream eating contest that's going to air on TV, so... They're going to a practice run together today. Honestly, how ridiculous is that? Honestly, I couldn't care less about Masa one way or another. Minori Thakawa thought. This whole experience was turning to a real ordeal. So yes, we were in a real bind. We're in a restaurant here, not a charity operation. 
I call and ask them to sell up, but they'd always insist, oh, we don't have any money. And that's a lie. It's gotta be a lie. What else could it be? Otherwise, how could I keep mag making that magazine of theirs? That Celebrity Confidential or whatever the hell it is. Celebrity Confidential was a weekly tabloid put out by one of Heaven Publishing's, com Publishing's competitors. You know, I was just gonna let that egregious mix-up slide. And that's not all. Oh no, on top of that, their magazine's little Gourmet Gap... Gourmet Gab's Corner, or whatever they call it, ran, ran a scathing review of us. After that, customers started keeping their distance, and I aged 20 years practically overnight. Uh -uh. Gourmet Gab's was a column that ran in Celebrity Confidential. There's nothing of the sort in four-star general gossip. One of the two magazines mixed up somehow. Awful. Just awful, isn't it? All I want to do is make soba for people to enjoy. So to be treated like this, to be treated like this. The woman had started to sob. Claver began to waver in her trembling hand. Where is this going? <laughs> this is kind of scary. I don't know where this is going. But then, early today, these two Yakuza-looking fellows came by. That they were looking for Toyama from Heaven Publishing. Because they saw one of our menus at his office and figured he might have come by. Talk about Ozu and Sagawa. They've both been nearby when Minori Kawa was reading through the desk drawers. They must have spotted the menu then. Told him he wasn't here and hadn't del ordered delivery in some time. So, said that if I happened to see him to give them a call. It's just gonna turn them away. Look like a pair of nasty loan sharks. Tayama would never be able to pay off his tab if they caught him. I told him as much. Lowered her voice before continuing. But they said they'd be most appreciative if I could let them know. Even offered to pay his tab for me if I did. And well, that pretty much settled it. Let them give me their phone number. Mary Kawa's face went pale. This lady's been bribed by those two thugs? So I guess you figured it out. A little earlier, Tayama dropped by looking like he was trying to lie low. So it all came together. I snuck out back and gave those two a call. So here we are. You guys were just a hair too late. Crap. Be carted off by the money lenders. How to find him right away. Mr. Mino, you have to hurry and look for him. Yes, yeah. Mariko and the others had headed for the door. Wait. <laughs> voice sounded as if it heck echoed up from the very depths of hell. When I call one, the company stopped in their tracks. Uh, you think I can just let you go? The old woman began to stalk towards them. Those guys. They left without showing their appreciation or paying, or paying off that tab. They lied to me. So, just who's going to show me the appreciation I'm owed? Who's going to pay that tab? We're all this together, trying to play me for a fool. The hell has no fury for a woman scorned. Lifted her cleaver high. Her eyes smoldered with an inhuman rage. Murderous aura surrounded her knife like bonfire wind. Wait, were Toyama's his friends? <laughs> then prepare yourselves. You'll repay his death with me with your lives. Man, I feel worse. <laughs> This is kind of like a shitty situation to be in, but I feel worse for Katayama. Katayama was just dragged into this. Three companions stood paralyzed with horror, watching their bloody doom approach. Blade glimmered in the dimness as she swung it towards Minori Kawa. Time for some fresh meat. Dead. Minori Kawa, Chiaki, and Katayama screamed. The cries echoing clear across Dogen Saga. Yeah, don't- you don't say, okay. Strategy at the Noodle House. An ordinary grudge at the proprietors of Dogena and held towards Toyama, as Binori Kawa and the others found out firsthand, falling victim to her mighty cleaver. Yeah, this isn't the right place to have them meet up with Toyama. Seriously, who the heck decided this was a good idea? Yeah. Man. <laughs> Bad times, five o'clock blog. Wait, what? 
view all bad endings in the five o'clock time block? Is there only one? I guess there's only one, one bad end here. <laughs> and it's that one. Back to the cafe. Let us check. A familiar cafe by the station was a natural choice. Describe the location. Okay, Cafe La Trek. Got it. I'll see you there. Maybe that are his belongings. Get back in my party. Even though we TPK'd in that one bad end. <laughs> he reached Cafe La Trek without an incident. Minari Kyle promptly spotted the publisher over here, eyeing his surroundings with obvious unease. Step by side, suddenly sipping on some juice. We just came over as Minarikawa joined them. May I take your order? Water. Just water, sir. Fine, make it a double. Get it back into the kitchen. <laughs> this poor waitress. Tayama looked over at Katayama. Who's this guy? Ichiro Katayama from Chonipun Pertentang. Turn to Minari Kyle with a quizzical look. What's something from the printer doing with you? I'll explain later. There's no time for that right now. I need you to answer some questions. Well, what kind of juice is that? That's some fancy looking juice. It actually kind of looks like melon soda. Might be melon soda. Does the name Kenji Osawa ring any bells? Osawa? Heads up a laboratory in Okoshi Pharmaceutical, you ran a piece on him in the first ever issue of Four Star General Gossip. Local marriage piece. Do you remember the details from that article? Do you think I am? I used to be a local news copy editor for the Central Times. I got the details for all the stuff I've ever covered here in my head. Uh -uh. Do you know who Kenji Osawa's wife was dating before they got married? Blinked his eyes vacantly. What's the matter? This, uh, it's a pretty tough pop quiz you're giving me. Rise, kids! It's time for a science quiz. What's the color, odorous gas, lighter than air, and used for consumer and munis municipal gas applications, also known as marsh gas and sw or swamp gas, helium, it's helium. Do it next time for the answer. Cut the crap, man. You said you have all the details inside your head. They're in there, all right. They're just not coming out. Mr. Toyama, please. Whether or not you'll be able to pay off your debts depending on your memory here. During this, how to cast a cold glare up at our father. <sighs> Alright, I can remember. Or at least try. Um, to himself, his gaze turned inward. Hmm. So, I feel like it was a really common name. Sato, Yamada. Either of those? They're pretty common names. Tanaka. <laughs> Check his head. Suzuki? Nakamura. No. But I feel like we're on the right track. Television. Inside the cafe is switched over to a news report on the Shibuya explosion. Remains of the individual discovered within the minivan itself, who had been since been identified as pharmaceutical company executive, Mamoru Tanaka. Mamoru Tanaka? Turn around to look at the TV. An image of the victim's face appeared on the screen. What? <laughs> Nearly falling out of his seat. That's him. It was him right there. Mamoru Tanaka. <clears throat> his voice nearly cracked as he pointed emphatically at the TV. That's who Kenji Osawa's wife was dating before they got married. Mamoru Tanaka. Feel himself getting goosebumps. Victim of a terrorist bombing in Shibuya was also linked to the researcher who was a key to a terrorist virus vi viral scare. His reporter's hunch was now a certainty. Right now, Shibuya was at the center of some massive conspiracy. This went far beyond even a major scoop. Mr. Toyama, we need to make sure that next month's issue hits shelves. Called up Kenji Osawa to let him know the results of his little investigation, okay. Well, I haven't played Kenji stuff yet, so... Hold on. Let's call the man. Or, let's see what the man is up to. Hmm. 
feel like this is about to be like a really short time lock, actually. The rain won't let up. The sound was growing louder and louder inside my head. The sound of regret splattering against my heart. My emotions shook. My emotion. My emotions surged like a terrible storm within me. I never wished for this. Never expected my heart to be dragged so far beyond my control. We can't say Maria. We can't say Maria. We can't say Maria. Words storm through Osawa's mind in a re relentless cacophony. Think about Hitomi. Called up images of the bodies from the human testing trials on his computer monitor. No, but imagine his daughter in the same gruesome state. In just a few more hours, Maria would begin hemorrhaging blood and die like the people in the pictures had. We can't say Maria. We can't say Maria. We can't say Maria. We can shake the words, sort of reality from his mind. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Again, pounding his fist fiercely on the desktop. Sir, what are you doing? I tried to intervene, but he kept pounding away. He finally ceased. The pain of repeated impacts lingered on his hands. My research was never about any sincere desire to help people. Now I'm paying the price for that. That one time it finally matters. I can't even save my own daughter. Mr. Osawa set his hand on his shoulder. You can always blame yourself later. But for now, think again, good and hard. Is there really no other way to say Maria? Nothing else we could try. He shook his head. Only means we have led if it was using Tanaka's password to unlock doors. And now Tanaka's dead. There's no other way. Is there a possibility that Mr. Tanaka could have told someone else his password? This was something Osawa hadn't considered. Was there anyone Tanaka might have shared his password with? Only one person came to mind. There may be someone. You're referring to I, sir. Cast his eyes down. He figured it out then. Yeah. Back during the commotion over that listening device, and a type clip isn't the sort of present one gives to one husband, to one's husband's co-worker. <clears throat> and yet, although some might consider it somewhat uh, appropriate, inappropriate, Mr. Tanaka was wearing it as if it was a matter of course, which uh, is something about the relationship. Kajiwara's voice trailed off. He coughed up, he coughed apologetically and tried again. I realize it's an awkward situation, sir, but please check with your wife. Even if I does happen to know the password, this is no good if Maria gets quarantined someplace we can't reach her. I understand. I'll bring Maria to you then. I'll do any I'll do everything in my power to make that happen. A whole, whole bunch of bananas. Man. He used a bunch of bananas from his pocket. These are all left over. <laughs> You're more than welcome to them, sir. How do you fit that in your suit? Despite his gentle smile, the rest of his face was firm with resolve. He said you didn't care whether, or whether other people understood you, didn't you, Mr. Osawa? Not guardedly. The risk of being presumptuous, sir. I understand you. You speak quiet, the workaholic myself. Just like me. And I said an awkward. On another occasion, Kajiwara was shocked to run into a man who looked just like him. The fellow was a stylist at a hair salon. Kajiwara visits on a the occasion. He let out a gasp of surprise of, of seeing his own... He let out a gasp of surprise of his own upon seeing the detective. Kajiwara felt a particular connection and was expecting to... Was expecting to go to the salon regularly. As what he did for a living, answered honestly, and he was a detective. The other man's face went pale, and he bolted out of the building. Never saw that man again after that. Okay, that's weird. Calling yourself innocent, huh? How modest of you. Not on a sardonic chuckle, and after a moment, Kajira joined in. They're bonding. Next time I see you, Mr. Osawa, I'll have Maria with me.
He had a slight bow, then left the study and looked at the determination on his face. <clears throat> Watched him go with admiration. No matter what trouble arose, the man always looked for something he could do. He really was a fellow who knew how to hang tough. Compared to that. I'm just... Even articulate his own self-disgust. Asking I about the password will also mean inquiring into a relationship with Tanaka. The prospect was daunting. <clears throat> Venturing into the emotional territory of another person was his weakest suit. He left to study, but somehow found himself making his way to Amari's room, not Ai's. He had been into his daughter's room since a certain rainy day years before. Stepped quietly inside and saw Maria's world laid out before him. A small photo was set atop her neat and tidy desk. Close up of someone's hands doing Cat's Cradle. Whose hands were they? The skin tone didn't appear to be in Maria's. Cannons. Photographs were pinned to a corkboard that hung on the wall. Snapshots of people and townscapes from the Middle East. One glanced back at them and saw felt like he was back there for a moment. They weren't necessarily aesthetically pleasing, but they all looked like they'd been taken by a professional. When he saw it, spotted the last photo on the cork board, however, he was certain that Maria had taken them all. Aww. The last picture was of Osawa himself. He is facing the camera, holding some luggage, and flashing an awkward smile. It's a comical, affectionate image. He looks- he does look like... <laughs> I don't know, he looks too nice for it to be a... <laughs> to be not be like a model or anything. He'd never known that photography was one of his daughter's hobbies. No. This would be on a mere hobby. It she perhaps aspire to be a professional photographer one day? She had the aptitude for it from the look of things. Maria, a photographer. As he mulled the idea over, Saw felt his chest tighten. Right now, it looked like Maria's hopes and dreams were about to be snuffed out. Her future consists of bleeding to death a few short hours from now. Stared vacantly, vacantly out the window. The view from Maria's room remained unchanged from so long ago. Again, that rainy day crept back into his mind as vivid as the present. On that day, Osawa was dealing with some pressing business from work. He sconded himself in his study, wrestling with some paperwork, paperwork when Hitomi barged in, looking distraught. Maria's gone. Saying that Hitomi was legitimately alarmed, Osawa hurried to Maria's room. On a letter she'd left atop her writing desk. Dad, you only care about Hitomi. You're always working and you never do anything with me, so I'm running away. A few hours earlier, he'd cancelled their weekend trip to the amusement park. He just wasn't going to be able to get his work done in time. Signed her herself to readily enough, but Maria just couldn't accept it. Looking forward to it for so long, she reeled at him. How many times had he broken one of his promises to her? Tell me understands why we can't go, so why can't you do the same? Cold rebuke had ended her complaining, but it was clear she still didn't accept the situation. Tommy helped him look around, but they found nothing missing from Maria's room. Despite her assertion that she was running away, then it seemed like there was no point in being overly concerned. Maybe she's at the park she always goes to. Tommy looked worried. Roughly a 25 minute walk from the house. It only take about an hour for Asawa to go get her and bring her home. An hour was more than he can afford to spare right now. Dad, I think she's waiting for you to go after her. You didn't need to tell me to tell him that. You knew well enough. What called him what called him so much him so much about the situation? Why did she have to pull something like this precisely when his work was at his busiest? He'd done everything he could as a father since his wife had passed away. Why couldn't his daughter see that? I think you're being dumb, man. It's alright. Sister will come back. Coming down pretty hard outside the window. Do 
cute seeing she brought an umbrella. I don't know, but with rain like this, she'll come back home soon enough. <sighs> Stupid, man. <laughs> That's just dumb. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Spoke the words for himself as much for Tomi. And he headed back to his study and got back to work. Dumbass. But several hours went by and still Maria did not return. Rain had gotten even more tense to the point where Osawa could hear it in his study. He was so concerned about his missing girl that he couldn't focus on his work, but suddenly refused to, to give in and go search for her. Fucking hell. Several more hours passed. At last, Maria appeared at the front door soaking wet. Met her silently in the entry entryway. With strands of hair clung to the girl's forehead as she looked up at her father with a bitter glare. You don't care what happens to me, do you? That's shitty parenting, I'm sorry. Dumbass. Fucking all. Immediately, Osawa smacked her across the cheek with the flat of his hand. It's the first time in his life he ever struck someone. <sighs> he hadn't known such a violent impulse could exist inside him. So dare her, her hand pressed to her cheek. Tears welled up in her eyes. She began to tremble. On her lip was a small bead of blood. A flood of guilt and regret rose up against Os inside Osawa, as if he'd just shattered some intricate piece of glasswork. How? How could I do such a thing? Clenched his shameful hand into a fist. That moment he was afraid of Maria. He's afraid of Maria, huh? Afraid that his daughter could bring such raw emotion out of him and make him do something so thoughtless. But even more, he was afraid of how stunted he was as a human being. Someone like him really fit to be a parent. What kind of future could Maria and Hitomi hope for with a father like him? That was why he married Ai as Makino had proposed. Having a mother, he decided it would help keep his family together despite their sad excuse for a father. But in doing, but in so doing, so I dug a psycholog psychological ditch between himself and his daughters. A deep ditch, so that he could keep his daughters from being hurt. So he wouldn't hurt himself. <clears throat> Sal was staring across that ditch, wondering if it was too wide to leap. He got back to his earlier exchange with Kajiwara. If you're angry, you show it. If you get sad, you show it. It's human nature to let other people know how we're feeling, after all. But what if doing that hurts the other person? You apologize. <laughs> that was right. He had to apologize for, to Maria for what he'd done that day. It still wasn't too late. It's never too late. When it comes to family, there's no such thing as game over. Called Pretty Honey's words. He needed to apologize to Maria. And so he needed to ask I for that password. Saul so was going to have to face his wife. Great. <laughs> Guess we'll take the jump for Minori Kawa's den. Get back in there. Nice. <clears throat> uh, I saw his phone rang and Minorikawa's phone number popped up on the LCD. Finished looking into the matter Osawa had asked about. Mr. Osawa, sorry to keep you waiting. Gotta go. Looked into the background of the story you asked about. Learned who your wife was dating. Who was it? Brief pause. More Tanaka. I see. Finally had a proof positive of a relationship between I and Tanaka. 
more than ever, it was no time to waver. No matter how painful the reality was, it was also true that if they hadn't been dating, there'd probably be no way of saving Maria. So, what was this big thing about disrupting the power balance of the world all about? <laughs> so I need to take care of my end first. Once I'm finished, I'll tell you everything. That's fine. Things are pretty hectic on, hectic on my end right now anyway. Expecting Minorikawa to put up more of a fight. You figured a reporter for four-star general gossip would be more persistent. By the way, it's one other thing I wanted to tell you, Mr. Osawa. You can practically sense the finger pointing his way from the other end of the line. Don't be too angry with your wife. All too often in this world, people let their anger get in the way of solving their problems. You may have a point. That all right, Chuckle. All right. I'll call you back later. <clears throat> Standing by herself in the yard, she kept her back to him as he approached. May I have a moment? What? Still, she didn't bother to turn around. Something I, important I need to talk to you about. I'm not in the mood right now. Please, I realize you're upset about Tanaka's death, but... I slowly shook her head. Don't just tell me what you want. Hurry up and get to the point. Try to move closer to her, but she pointedly kept her distance. Oh, well, I already got the achievement for getting all the bad ends, so for this time luck, so I think it really matters what I say here. There's something Osawa needed to hear him for himself before this went any further. Are you in love with Tanaka? What are you talking about? Saw so frowned. Why did you marry me? You gotta be kidding. This is the important discussion you wanted to have. Did you ever love me? Not a joyless chuckle. Love. Mason, to even hear the word leave your lips. There's another challenge in her voice. Let me ask you the same question. Did you ever love me? To be honest. I married you because I thought my daughters needed a mother. Wow. What a weary sigh. Some of the combated tension left her shoulders. That really is honest. So I guess I should be honest too. I married you because my father asked me to. I wanted to chain you down so you didn't leave for some other company. And you're okay with marrying something for some marrying someone for something like that? Something like that, you really have no idea how much you're worth, do you? The value of one woman's life versus the potential profits in your research would bring it- <sighs> There's no comparing the two. Man. I feel- oh God, I just feel kind of sorry for I. <sighs> I can't just- I just- her dad must have been shitty for her to have this sort of mindset on, like, women's lives and stuff. Man. If that meant Okoshi Pharmaceutical could monopolize your talents, then... But it even matter that I wanted for myself. Something akin to desperation in I's words. So you sent me those threatening emails, too. What? Looked at him in shock, he knew he guessed correctly. He would go that far just to keep me tied to your father's business. That's right, I- I would. Down on her lip hard. But what'd you- would you even know about how I feel? I'm sorry. Don't apologize. I'm not the victim here. Say that. But isn't it because of me that you and Tanaka weren't able to stay together? began to tremble. Her secret was out. When did you figure that out? Earlier today. That tie clip. <laughs> right. Not the sort of gift one gives to one's husband's co-worker, is it? Even if it was a listening device. My smile was better with self-deprecation. Self I saw I couldn't help but pity her. Even Tanaka must have suspected that she placed the company's profit above all else if she'd go to such lengths to protect its interest. 
It's like she'd given up her entire life just for that. Man. Well, aren't you angry? He shook his head. Could you tell me one thing, though? Did Tanaka ever tell you what his lab password was? His password. I needed to get the antiviral out of the lab. Lynch had the suggestion to get it out. What are you thinking? That belongs to the company. I just need one dose. To save Maria. Please. If you know, just tell me. I don't know it. It's rarely a whisper. Looked his wife right in the eye. You're telling the truth. I am. I see. Any idea what number he might have used? Turn to her husband once more. Tanaka hadn't given Ai his password. Saw his last chance had gone up in smoke. Had a long, shaky breath and shut his eyes tight. Was it true? Was there nothing more he could do? Think about Maria. She has the stuff in her blood. God damn it. Let her keep out. <laughs> Man didn't seem terribly surprised. Probably he had his suspicions all along. Told him that there was something he needed to do before he was ready to give details on the big scoop, but he would call back later. Marikawa knew he didn't have his hands full getting the current issue of the gossip wrapped up for the 7 o'clock deadline. Slapped his hands down on, down on the table. We're the editing meeting right here. You gotta lead in on the Shibuya terrorist bombing into the next issue. Article about the twins winning the beauty contest can be dropped for that. We'll use the info from Kenji Osawa as the basis for a big scoop in the issue after that. Mr. Toyama, have any problems with that? It should be fine, but what about the remaining pages for next month's issue? Open the file on his computer. That button, the DTP, came up on the monitor. <clears throat> demo on the burning hammer sales demo. Surveillance, surveillance camera opinion piece. The interview with R.I. The story are finished, the copy already incorporated into the layout. Chucky Street interview piece was loaded in, that one could be checked off as well. How's your copy? I'm sorry, I just need a little bit longer. I still seem to be giving her a bit of trouble. Our clone SOS was still just a placeholder on the layout. I not even gotten any material for that, putting it even further behind than Chucky Street interviews. <clears throat> Still, he'd at least learn where Shabuya's legendary street gang made their hangout. Just have to take the risk of dropping in on them unannounced to ambush them with some interview questions. Needed for Shibuya bombing. It wasn't even the layout yet. Completely blank slate. Against all odds, they were going to need to put that article together from nothing with just an hour and change. It's possible work for just him and Chiaki to do. Oh well well. Things coming along. <clears throat> Tatayama rose and came closer, trying to peer at the monitor. Covered the screen. Don't look. <laughs> Printer reps all the blank pages. He might decide to stop waiting. Would you mind telling me roughly what percent of the total you have completed thus far? Come off it, man. We're at 100%. 100% done. That implies you're all finished. Can I please have the data then? No, no, no. Saying our willpower is up 100%. <laughs> I'm not gonna even pretend I understand what you mean by that. Shaking his head, Akatayama sat back down in his chair. Norikawa. So I know I asked before, but why is someone from the printer here again? Katayama promptly chimed in. The long and short of it is that your proofing deadline has been changed to seven. It's impossible. Who's doing the lead in for Shibuya bombing? I'd mean Norikawa and Chiyagi both stared back non-committedly. Really is impossible. I'll never meet that deadline. Don't have enough people. So yeah, but you can also work. Do you have enough? Starts out his finger. Mr. Toyama, you're gonna write that one and handle the layout. I've been publishing as your company, so do some fucking work. <laughs> Would you step up in order to protect it? Hung his head. Even if I headed to the scene right now, I'm sure the other outlets have already gotten their coverage. I wouldn't be able to find anything new to write about. <laughs> Man. <laughs> he 
You look so done, Katayama. So you're just gonna give up? A moment later, Tayama was on the floor, I mean, Okahawa glaring down at him. I always thought that you wanted to tell the world, world about the things the mass media can't or won't write about. What the hell difference does it make if they've already gone and gotten the bites they're after? His voice was raw with emotion. Don't you dare give up. Not that easily. Get your ass out there. Find something that only you can write about. Marikawa. Kento object, but then he glanced over at Hana. Imploring look in her eyes as well. Pissed. <laughs> Get what you're saying. But still, you're expecting a lot. Then, despite his words, he flashed a broad grin. Yeah. And Kyle let a quiet chuckle. And it's got you all fired up. Yeah. Fired up, alright. Tama's face shone to resolve me near a call I hadn't seen in a long time. There you go. That's the Toyama I know. I'm really sorry. Now I see the huge burden I put on you. Damn, it's gonna be alright. To his feet, Toyama took his daughter by the hand and strode boldly out of the cafe, looking like a changed man. Did you pay for your drinks? <laughs> Watched him go, glad the dittering was over. Even if Toyama was still in his pride, he'd be cutting it close to do that article in an hour. He pulled through somehow. Came to taking care of Hana, the man would rise to the occasion again and again. Father and daughter disappeared into the crowd, hand in hand. Shook himself out of his reverie. Alright. Despite the clear blue sky, an unexpected gust of wind blew across his cheek. Come on guys, we gotta get going. Things might look grim, but he wasn't going to give up until the bitter end. Time to head to the SOS hangout, Inferno. Speed! Three ran hard, long and hard after leaving the cafe. The proofing deadline was 7 o'clock. You need to finish up with SOS by 6.30 at the latest. That's 5 o'clock right now, okay. Gang's hangout was in Harajuku, Uda Harajuku. Running all the way there on foot was going to take eat too much of their time. Kimizuka, Kimizuka, we need you. <laughs> Traffic was at near standstill for some reason, and there wasn't a taxi in sight. How do you plan on running like this? Just take a look at the road. With this traffic, there's no point in hailing a cab. I mean, Norikawa was feeling their time pressure now. Just gotta have to keep running until the road's clear. What? Stop your whining. Just keep quiet and stick with me. Well, he got on Toyama to find his willpower again. Next month's issue would come out in time, and there was no way to f some printer guy was gonna mess that up now. No signs of abating. Catching a cab wasn't going to be an option. Finding an ever louder echo of despair, Minori Kawa crept up his desperate headlong rush. <clears throat> to rush into a situation recklessly or heedlessly, not quite the same as being a daredevil. Limits to how far the mind could push the body before exhaustion set in. Eek! Oh no, Chiaki! Man. Oh no, your computer. How are you? My girl. Oh, oh, that's- oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's very bad. <laughs> Sarah running across the pedestrian overpass, Chiaki slipped and took a nasty fall. She scanned her knee hard enough to draw blood. Oh, you. Don't just stand there. Help the poor girl already. I'm sorry, Mr. Mino. I... Bubbled with suppressed tears. Maybe it was cruel to make her run with her computer all the way to her Harajuku. Copy for interview still needs to be looked over. can just leave her there. Undecided. Even at a full run, they wouldn't make it in time. Traffic the way it was, there was nothing they could do. You now have... Consulted his pocket watch. Exactly one hour remaining. Damn it, what do we do? Let's lead a clock ticked on. To be continued. Man. Who is the jump for Achi? <laughs> yeah, I can't jump. Why not? Oh, huh. 
huh? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Maybe like one of these choices has a jump instead or something. I jump from me Norikawa's. Okay, that's weird. Endo. And then I can jump to Achi. Okay. <laughs> That's a bit of a stretch. Workroom door slowly eased open. <sighs> Achi was too shocked for words. The girl who entered looked just like you told me. Maria, he told me. Blinked in bewilderment. It was almost as if Hitomi was standing in front of a mirror. The two girls looked so similar. Maria, thank goodness you're all right. I'm so sorry I had you all worried. Safe, Achi realized. At last, he managed to fulfill his duty. How did you manage to get out of the storeroom? Daisuke had gone pale, tell me. Who was it who came up with this kidnapping plan? <sighs> Shoved Maria aside and lung lunch for Itomi. Stanley moved to stop him, but before he could intervene, the older man had, had a hold on Itomi, pressing something that looked like a flashlight up against her neck. Dad? Started toward him, but Stanley held up a hand. Don't move. That's a stun gun. Self-defense equipment for repelling would-be attackers with electrical shock. Several types, including baton-type stun prods and guns that fire needles attached to flexible wires. The latter type, especially, is frequently referred to in the U.S. as a taser or taser gun, due to the popular models produced by Taser International now Axon. Stun guns are used not only by civilians but also by law enforcement, law enforcement and military personnel for non-lethal applications. If he zaps her in the neck, it could kill her. You know your stuff. Still in American Electronics. No, I do this for a living. Drew his gun in an instant, aiming it, taking aim at Daisuke's forehead. Hold on. Between Stanley and his father. Dad, let you tell me go. You need to stop this nonsense. Walks slowly towards his father, pleading look in his eyes. Nonsense. Which one of us is talking nonsense here? You don't know what's going on. If only you knew everything, then you'd be helping me. What do you mean everything? This girl's heart, we can save Susan, eh? Dad, who was it exactly who told you that? Did not reply. I asked you a question. Who was it that put this crazy idea into your head? For an organ trafficker I met at the hospital. Japan, a medic medical professional known as a transplant coordinator, handles the liaison between the donor and the recipient parties. Many cases of illegal or borderline illegal activity carried out by a third party organ brokers. Countries where organ transplants are openly performed for monetary gain. No shortage of specialists willing to do the job. These questionable markets include suppliers who source viable organs and tissue for transplants. From for transplant from cadavers, cadavers, cadavers. I don't know, snort, likely story. It's true. I was suspicious at first myself, but I couldn't just sit around and wait for Susan A to die. And after talking to him about her rare blood type and all of the difficulties in performing a transplant, he promised to do everything in his power. Heisky's hands were trampling. Tears welled up in his vacant and bloodshot eyes. A while later, he got back in touch and told me he found a potential match. Someone with the same blood type as Susan A and roughly the same age, but... Told me that girl was still alive. What was the point? Her height may have... May have her, higher, her, height, her heart might be a match for Susan A's, but it didn't matter if we couldn't get our hands on it. Said that, but the man told me. Told you what? With his lip. He told me to abduct her and turn her, turn her over to him. Find a way to make it all work. Unless, Desuke had confessed. I had come to grips with the truth he, the truth he just heard. 
I had to do something. I had to abduct this girl and see things through. I just couldn't take it. Tony had already been taken from me. The thought of losing Susan A too. I had to make sure I didn't fail. So it was this organ trafficker who came up with the kidnapping scheme, scheme then. Kept his gun aimed at his target. Daisuke nodded. Describe him for me. Tall, black hair. Spoke fluent Japanese. Raised an eyebrow at that. Wondered if he had some idea who it might be. Taking Maria hostage in order to lure out Hitomi. Was that his idea as well? Yeah, yes. That's right. I allowed his computer to access my surveillance camera system as well. But then this morning I got a call from the hospital saying Susan A's condition was critical. I couldn't wait any longer. I had to help my girl right away. And then... Cut himself off, reaffirming his grip on his stun gun. I was looking at the surveillance monitor and saw a detective I happened to know. It's right next to this girl here. So I decided to ask him. I knew if, if I did, he wouldn't refuse. He could never refuse a request from me. That was the man with the cane. The voice was low and hoarse. Yes, I was giving him directions while I followed you on the monitors. Dad, you need to let go of Itomi now. There's no point to this. I took another step closer to his father. There is a point. I killed this girl here and now your sister can get the surgery he need she needs. But even Aji knew that things couldn't possibly work out that way. His father had grown so desperate to help Susan A that he lost all sense of judgment. Why, Aji, why won't you help me? Don't you want to save Susan A? It made a pathetic sight. And yet his desperation to save his child was so palpable it was heartrending. But back to his time that he laid his father out while sparring. No matter how pathetic he may have looked, Aji had always felt that sense of parental love from him. Not going to be able to talk him down. Aji stuck his head. Stanley, lower your gun. Tears were bowling up in his eyes. Please, lower your gun. Hearing the determination in Aji's voice, Stanley quietly complied. Stepped up to Daisuke, getting a firm grip on his father's slender shoulder. Dad, of course I want to help Susan A. Why are you trying to stop me? Dad, do you think this is what she'd want you to do? Daisuke's face fell. Did Susan A ask for this, Dad? She'd tell you to take someone else's heart so she could live longer. Did she, Dad? Fights seemed to ebb from Daisuke's body. Stun gun hung limply in his hand. If Suzanne asked me to go get, to get someone someone's heart for her, I wouldn't object. I'd help her, just like she wanted. I wouldn't let you bear these crimes by yourself. That's not what it, this is, is it? Susan A would never ask us to do something like this, would she? But now tears were streaming down Achi's cheeks. He knew that his father thought about Suze more than any than he thought of anyone else. So he knew full well that she would never want this. Susan is not like me. She's smart, she's kind. She'd never be happy about taking someone else's heart, even if it saved her life. Sure, she'd never accept that. She wouldn't be able to live with it, knowing something so horrible happened to someone else for her sake. Isn't that the Susan A we know? Cheeks were smeared with tears now as well. But then, we're not going to be able to help her. The sound of father and son weeping we echoed through the workroom. Maybe so. Maybe we won't. It's better than the misery and suffering she'd have to live with. Slumped to his knees on the floor, collapsing like a crumbling mound of sand. Tell me freed from his grip, she stood motionless. Tears in her eyes, too. Such an idiot, Dad. Such a complete, utter idiot. Sobbing, Achi embraced his father.
Sudden thud from near the door. Everyone turned to look. <gasps> oh no, 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 no. Maria had crumpled to the floor, and a newcomer had appeared. At some point, Kenneth had silently entered the room. Now she cradled Maria in her arms. As a man, Achi didn't recognize his face pale. After the young man's desperate pleading, the other fellow, apparently his father, finally gave in. He released his hold on Itomi. <clears throat> Tension in the room was replaced by a solemn air of gravitas. Seeing father and son weeping as they spoke made Kano think back to the, his conversation with Tatano before his stakeout. What was it in people that drove them to do such horrible things? Sometimes it was a desire to save the ones they loved. Even such heartfelt human emotion could drive someone to wrongdoing. Why? Why did people have to be like that? A sudden thud snapped Kano out of his musing. An instant later, Kenan hurried past him into the workroom. Yeah. Maria had collapsed on the floor and now Kenan was beside her. In a panic, Kano rushed into the workroom as well. Stay back! Can shadow as the others to try to huddle around the fallen girl. Please don't be what I think this is. Had the virus gone symptomatic? Two hours ago, Stanley had told Kano that Maria was infected. He also said that her symptoms wouldn't develop for another four hours. Shouldn't they still have two more hours to go? Like she was dead, her eyes closed, her body motionless. Tried to approach despite Cannon's warning. Maria. Maria, what's wrong? Well, his arms wide to hold her back. Her sister has been infected with the Ua virus. The Ua virus? Tommy's face went pale. Hey, should you really be that close if she's developed symptoms? Then moved from Maria's side. Rested her hand on the other girl's forehead. No fever. No blood coming from her ears. No limp swelling. I'll be alright. She hasn't gone symptomatic yet. That case, why did she collapse? I'm not sure yet. Whatever the case, if we don't get her that antiviral, she's done for. We need to get her to the lab right away. She was trembling with anxiety. No, that's not an option. Kano's tone was grave. You may already be aware, Miss Osawa, but without a password, we can't access access the antiviral storage. But when I went there, my father, Mr. Tanaka... Mamara Tanaka is dead. Murdered. What? She stared at him uncomprehendingly. No. Can't be true. He's a member of a crime syndicate. It's possible they killed him in order to silence him. There's no way to save my sister. There's a hollow look in Hitomi's eyes. I won't accept that. Why? Why can't we help her? No one had an answer. Kano gritted his teeth and hung his head. I did it have to come to this. Come this far, but there's nothing he could do and he hated himself for it. I'll go to the laboratory. It was cannon. Electronic lock breaking is my specialty. Wait. The young man Achi spoke up suddenly. So you're a martial arts badass, but your specialty is lock breaking. I'm positively dumbstruck. Nor to him thinking out loud. Brute force. Script analysis technique that involves test input of all theoretically possible patterns. If time were unlimited, this would be the most reliable means of decipherment. In practice, process te takes massive amounts of time and, com and computational power. Defeated by symptoms that prohibit access after a limited number of failed input attempts. Side channel. Rather than trying to decipher the password itself, this method involves analyzing information from the device, such as processing time, power consumption, electromagnetic leaks, and using these details to exploit the system. Isolating the run state of devices is a crucial element of countering side-channel attacks. Shortcut. Script analysis method that uses mathematical algorithms to carry out efficient bulk calculations against a block cipher that makes use of a share key for encryption and decryption. 
Even when such calculations are theoretically possible, however, in practice, the process requires large amounts of time, and the block cipher is seldom at real risk. Given the situation, I think I'd have to go with side channel. Side channel? Where's your equipment? On the lab's PC will suffice. I can connect to a special server from the net. I don't really understand the stuff you're talking about, but I trust you to handle this. I mean, you did risk your life to save it, tell me from that minivan explosion and all. Can not it. Warn you in advance, though. Script analysis can take hours and still yield no results. Can't guarantee I'll be able to get the doors unlocked before Maria develops symptoms. I understand. But you nodded too. No one present had any objections. Huh? There's a curious sound from somewhere in the room. What is that? What's making that noise? Looked around the workroom. Uh oh. That's. that's my computer. Desky hurried to his desktop. The bank of monitors, which had been displaying surveillance camera footage from all around Shibuya, had all gone black. The hell? What's going on? It's all gone. The camera footage. It has been deleted. Linked in disbelief. Uh oh. Now then. Seems our main cast has all been assembled. Man's voice distorted by a voice mod. Suddenly emerged from the computer speakers. Uh moment later. The monitors all began to display a view of the inside of the workroom. What the hell is this? Someone's broken through our firewall. Security system for preventing unauthorized intrusion into a computer network stems from a metaphor. Metaphorical reapplication of the concept of a wall meant to inhibit the spread of fire or other destructive forces. <clears throat> I feel like the only the only time I've ever seen like a literal firewall was um DR2 Dragon <laughs> Open 2. You don't see them <laughs> much in fiction, surprisingly. They've hijacked a surveillance camera system. Color drained from Daisuke's face as he looked at the screens. Where are they filming us from? Just an image on the monitor to guess where the camera may be located. Over here? Lens of a camera set atop the computer monitor glimmered like an eye. A miniature camera used for web conferencing and the like. Now that Maria and Hitomi are both there, you'll probably surmise the situation at hand. So I offer a proposal. Laboratory password. In exchange for Tommy's blood. Realizing now that it was Alfred's voice they were hearing, everyone in the room froze. It's seven o'clock, roughly one hour from now. See that Hitomi Osawa is waiting at the scramble intersection outside of Shibuya Station, just like this morning. Unless, of course, you're feeling particularly confident. You do have Cannon with you. Perhaps you care to take a gamble on her block breaking skills instead. Locked her tongue in frustration. Rada had known exactly what the plan was. Of course, if Cannon isn't able to get the door open in time, what will you do then? Maria sure to die, yes, but that's not all. If you don't get agree to my offer, I have the means of creating another Maria, and a third. These infectees will spread the virus through Tokyo. The death toll will likely number in the hundreds of thousands. It's difficult to predict the, predict the scope of infection in the event of a bioterrorist attack employing a highly infectious viral agent in a city with a large and mobile population. In a worst case scenario, some researchers estimate as many as several million infected in a matter of days. So do think carefully before you decide. Chillingly matter of fact, appear at the rendezvous in person. After all, I wouldn't do for the start of the show to miss the final curtain. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you then. Now let's fell. Then, the images on the computer monitor returned to normal. Surveillance camera footage came back online as well. Promptly yanked out his ethernet cable and slammed his fist on the keyboards. Damn it, there's a hole in the firewall. I have to redo my security from the ground up. Good call. 
Can't win this if our intel keeps getting leaked. Ursus lips in consternation. What do we do? Do we give in to his demands? I mean, do we really expect he's going to blindly show up like that? He's practically begging us to come and catch him. Some deeper plan at work. I mean, saving my sister, I'll do it. Tell me was resolute. No. Can't. What? Why not? Because if you do, you'll be killed. What? Caught in her throat. With the antiviral still present in your body a week after the fact, you're too much of a liability for Alphard to just let go. He's right, don't do it. He told me you can't go. Even still, I... I want to do it. Stared defiantly at Stanley. Still want to go even knowing that you'll be killed. Can't just sit here and hope that Kana is able to pull this off. I want to do something for my sister. I want to save her. She peered down at Maria sprawled on the floor. She'd object to me going, I'm sure of that, but I want to do what I can to do things my way. No one tried to contradict her this time. She's willing to take the risk, then there are things the rest of you can do too. It's canon again. Let's hear it. He squared his shoulders. <clears throat> he was of the same mind as Tomi. He couldn't just do nothing and leave it all on canon. After everything he'd been through, he wanted to stick with this case until the very end. Apprehend Alphard at the rendezvous and demand a password from him. Offered a suggestion as if it were a simple task. That lets you get what you want without putting Hitomi in danger. Hold on. If we do arrest him, how are we going to get him to cough up the password? We don't have enough time to drag him off to an interrogation room. So not strike me as a sort of offer a confession that easily. There are ways. Once Alphard has made contact with Itomi, call my cell phone. Tilted her head. Call you? I have plenty of information Alphard might want, might want to bargain for. I can negotiate with him directly. Consider Cannon's proposal. I see. But I'll try both options. Tap the attempt to hack the password at the lab and also try negotiating with Alphard. Gives us two chances. <clears throat> that tiny ray of hope, Itomi's face brightened some. It's been to two groups, one for the lab and one for Shibuya Station. Exchange phone numbers so we can be in touch when the time comes. Share contact info as suggested. Tomi and Cannon called one another's phones to be sure. Tearful wing ring tone fell out of place, but also somehow soothing. A fragment of normalcy, normalcy in the midst of crisis. Well set then. Expression turned apologetic. I'm sorry, Cannon, for having to keep putting things on you. Hey, don't worry about it. She called my father. Call Losawa on her. Call on. Yeah, uh, asking him to let Maria and Cannon into the lab, okay. Tanaka hadn't given Ai his password. I saw his last chance had gone up in smoke. On a long, shaky bread and shut his eyes tight. Was it true? Was there nothing more he could do? His cell phone rang. When he saw the name of the incoming call display, he nearly shouted out loud. See Tomi. Tomi? Are you alright? Please tell me you're alright. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. But Maria's. Maria? Is Maria there with you? His heart leaped. Dad, there isn't any time for me to explain everything, so I'll have to just give you the main points. So we can, so we can save my sister, so stay calm and listen. I struggled to hold back the thousand questions that immediately came boiling into his mind. It's a girl named Cannon who's going to bring Maria to the lab. She's going to try to hack the password in order to get us inside. Hold on. What in the world is going on? There's a bunch of people working here working to help save Maria. Can you wait, a, wait for us at the lab, Dad? I'm not sure that look, electronic log is something that will be so easy to- We got another plan in motion, and if that goes well, we might be able to learn the password. It's all too much to follow, but Saw realized he'd have to take Yotomi at her word. Their only hope of saving Maria. Alright, do as you ask, but... Said you're trying the two approaches, you're not going to be in danger, are you? We'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Okay. 
Very well. I'm heading to the laboratory now. Can't. Can't go. The moment Osawa hung up and started for the house, I clung to him from behind. If you use the antiviral now, everything will go public. There's no way we can keep the virus or the antiviral under wraps at this point. Try to pull free, but his wife was stronger than he expected. If Maria infects other people, the whole world is going to find out in a matter of hours. We can just quarantine her. If it's handled correctly, we'll still be able to retain secrecy. Do you even have any idea what you're saying right now? I do. I know how it sounds, but this is... This is the only thing I can... Her voice trailed off. He could feel the force of her trampling where she held him. If I really put you into that much of a corner? Slipped from Ai's arms and prostrated himself in front of her. I'm sorry. I'm truly, truly sorry. Stop this, get up. If you're really sorry, then don't go to that lab. He remained silent, his forehead pressed to the dirt. He said, in Taivara, without corporate approval, your time with Akoshi is finished. That doesn't matter to me anymore. How can you say that? Virology is the only thing you've ever cared about. He began pummeling his back. Maybe virology is all I care about. I don't know the first thing about anything else. Never wanted to know. Never even thought to find out. Never bothered to learn what you or my own children might think. I'm a failure as a father and as a husband. How dare you say that? Only after it's come to this. Struck him again harder than before. You're right. Calf spout the words between her blows. Maybe this has been too long coming, but it's not too late. I can still start over. Start over? I've already turned out an American job. If you use that antiviral now, there won't be any starting over. You'll lose everything. Blade leaves you too. If you've gone and thrown everything else away like this, how could I possibly stay with you? Sobbing softly now. Wondered what her tears were for. It's one thing he did know. She was right. They couldn't be together anymore. Got to his feet and headed back into the house, leaving Aya behind. I'm sorry, ma'am, but your daughter is more important than your company. <laughs> Hurried through the back entrance and went into the garage. Climbed into his car, fastened his seatbelt, and took a deep breath. The image of a younger Maria rose in the back of his mind. There she was at the park, getting drenched by the rain, pulling back her tears as she waited for her father. Wait for me, Maria. Just time. I'm gonna come for you. I was wrong. Going to the lab wouldn't mean losing everything. He'd let too many important things slip through his fingers. Now, it's time to go take them back. <laughs> Pulled his car into the street and sped towards the laboratory. A pretty shot. As if the single that the long day was drawing to a close, the dazzling sun sank down between the buildings in the distance. I feel like we're nearing the end here. I don't know how many more time blocks we have. Oh! Sawa got his end. Okay. End of his story. And... I don't know what the and is. Get back to Kano then. Uh -uh. Lean into whisper into Cannon's ear. Are you sure you'll be okay with this? It's what? You're after Alf Alford. You sure you want to go to a lab and not? Right now, I want to say Maria. That's all. Tone was curt and mechanical as ever, but there was a fierce gleam of determination in her eyes. Something was very special to her. Alright, leave Alfred to me. Thumped himself on the chest. Boom. He succeeded this time, no matter what the odds. 
scarcely recall the whirlwind of events that have bought him, brought him here. Somehow, he survived a dozen disasters. Even now, a dear friend was in the hospital at risk of dying. Times where he'd been ready to give it up. And yet, at the end of it all, here he was. His opponent was an international terrorist. No matter how you looked at it, that wasn't a matchup for a mere detective. But, gotta do it anyway. Rumi. Jizuo. Sasayama. And Detective Tatsuno. <laughs> what happened to the Tatsuno anyway? <laughs> what happened? Did we just leave him on the roof there? I guess. And take down Alphard and save Maria Osawa's life. Just you watch and see. What happened to Tatsuno? I feel distinctly like, uh, since, um, Osara and Maria stories have come to an end, their ends, Minorikawa is probably gonna be the next one that ends, and then, uh, we'll be down to just Achi and Kano again, just like how we started the game. Stay back. Shouted at Achi when he tried to approach. Maria had fallen unconscious. Her heart was racing in his chest. Every silence fell over the room. Several seconds, no one said a word, their eyes all fixed on Maria. Cannon looked up, her face ashen. It's starting. Yeah, you don't need to give me the whole plan that we did in Kano's story again. <laughs> Hurry up and punch Toyama again so I can get to your ending. Or not ending. To be continued. Give me the give me the mid hour uh or uh inter hour uh cutscene thingy. Give it to me. Ugh, a lot. It feels like there's a lot going on, honestly. <laughs> At least these three left. Oh, whoa, whoa. Huh? Are... Are Jack Stanley? Is Jack Stanley about to get a root? Uh, I don't see... <laughs> He's not here. Jack Stanley and someone else? I'm not sure who. Oh, interesting. I guess Kano will have to like jump or like in order to get Achi's story again. We'll have to jump from Kano's story or something since these two are hanging out. It looked like Jack Stanley was gonna get route, so maybe I un unlock it somehow. Uh, I don't know who- I think someone else got a route, maybe Cannon then? Maybe Cannon and Jack Stanley are both getting routes this time block? Maybe. Maybe. 